Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new Road Reflections. Uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, this has been a little bit of a challenging thing recording <laughs> this video here. Um, I it, it's it's a it's like getting cold in Pittsburgh, and so you know, so my sinuses are all fucked up. And um, but I recorded this yesterday with 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 one of the topics that we're going to talk about today. And I didn't like the way it turned out because yesterday was a super long day. I was very tired. It was got very rambly and it wasn't as succinct as I would like it to be. And I know these are usually some what, you know, they're, they're kind of rantier videos. And then I started recording this as I was leaving my house um, and my alarm goes off. The alarm that I have set to tell me to get on the road goes off right in the middle of it and it cuts off the video because that's what it does it cuts off the video and uh so it's been a little bit of a challenging video to, to get off the ground uh but uh i want to i want to start with a few quick announcements uh one this is the week off no citizen revolution on friday october 2nd the next citizen revolution is friday october 9th and tickets are available for that on my website krishmohanhaha.com um, and you can, if you're if you're planning on attending all of the October shows, uh, you can just grab your all of the October show tickets from there. Um, and, you know, at the at the top of every month, uh, you know, the tickets for all the shows are are are, are available right there. So uh, that means I'm going to try to do a few extra live streams. It's been a very long time since I've done some live streams. Maybe it's, it's since like I don't know, June. Uh, end of June, early July, maybe was the last time I did a live stream. So I'm going to try to do a few more. I'm going to be in the studio. I have to work out some tech issues and they'll, they'll be streamed to Facebook right now. That's, I, I can only stream to one place at a time. Um, I would like to multi-stream and, and build that up a little bit, but, um, it is a, it is a, uh, money matter issue, uh, in regards to that. It's, it's, it's an additional $20 a month for me to um spend on uh for uh for these live streams uh so it's a it's a little bit more expensive and you know things are tight and that's just the way things are but you know if you want to help out a little bit and if you're if you you have some extra coinage to spare you can become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation uh over on my website that that always helps but it's uh not a necessity to do so uh anyway the, the the point being is i'm going to try to do these live streams on my weeks off so you'll get to maybe two or three live streams in one week uh more of these kind of road reflection videos uh on my weeks weeks off as well you know because i'll, I'll i have a little extra time the other thing i'm doing is sprucing up the old website so you'll probably end up seeing some some things change on the website uh, some if you if you're a person that goes to my website quite often to find stuff, you have already noticed uh, various changes have been applied to the website. Um, and lastly, uh, Bandcamp is doing a, a revenue share where they're giving 100% of the revenue back to the artists on Friday, October second, and uh, cons cons consequently, also every um, every first Friday. Uh, of the month for the rest of the year. They've been doing it all through the pandemic. And um, it's, it's very nice of them to do, very generous of them to do. I haven't really pumped it up as much as I probably should have. Um, just there's so much shit to talk about. And, there's, uh, and it's all me. I don't have a social media person. I don't have a fucking video editor or anything. So it's like I do a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, all that stuff takes time. And, I'm, and I also need some personal time to recharge and take care of myself and be with the people that I want to be with. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's also another reason why uh, you should donate because it, <laughs> it helps out with that sort of stuff. Eventually, if I get enough uh, sustaining members, I'll be able to hire a video editing person and that will be, uh, that'll be really wonderful. But uh, for now, it's all me, and, and that's why I haven't really pumped it. And, you know, sometimes, sometimes I want to. It's not like I don't want to, and, I, and it just falls through the cracks. 
Anyway, um, so so if you want to grab my album, if you want to grab any of my albums or all of my albums or how many ever you would like, uh, they'll be available on my Bandcamp page. There's some exclusive stuff on my Bandcamp page that you can't find anywhere else. Um, a lot of them are for free, and the only one that's available for sale that you have to pay for is my newest one, Politely Angry, which I released in June earlier this year, and that's a dollar. So uh, those are all the announcements. Again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com, K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Um, oh, one final note, too. If, if you are watching this as a premiere on, on YouTube or Facebook, um, at, you know, when I do the premiere thing, it appears as if it's a live video, but it's, it's a pre-recorded video that is being premiered on YouTube because they're trying to really push that YouTube TV thing. Um, I, I try to be in, present in the chats for as much as I can, but sometimes it just doesn't let me. Uh, it doesn't let me respond. Uh, it disables the chat function. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so it, so I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not willfully ignoring anybody when they, uh, uh, are, are, are being active in the chat section. I really appreciate that you're active in the chat section and leaving comments and, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I am, uh, uh, disabled sometimes in, by, by, by YouTube itself or, um, you know, uh, something else pops up and I am unable to keep an eye and monitor that sort of stuff. It's not a, a slight on you guys. I really love and appreciate you guys. But without any further ado, I do want to get into today's two big stories that we have. Um, the first one is going to be, uh, I, I want to talk about live events. Um, I have been noticing that there have been some live events there, you know, there, there are a couple places around the country that have been doing live events. Uh, a lot of them have been taking the secure safety protocols very seriously. I just uh, don't particularly think doing a live doing live events is a good idea, especially indoors. I don't think it's a good idea. Outdoors is uh, a, a little bit of a different story, L- less moving pieces, so to speak. But, um, you know, um, it, it is, it is a little, I think the indoor stuff is a little dangerous, but, and, and let, you know, I understand a lot of the reasons and why people are doing it, why, why venues are choosing to do it. I get it. I understand those. And I will talk about them in a few minutes. So before I have a bunch of artists and, uh, DIY venue owners who, who these? I mean, this is these are sort of the places that I tour. You know, I don't I don't tour big theaters or big venues like that. I, I tour smaller rooms. I, I tour black box theaters and underground spaces, house shows, things of that sort. Uh, and I I do understand why some of some people choose to do it, or or not even choose to do it, but rather have to do it. Right? Is is sort of the way that it plays out? Is they they they. They have to do it in order to sustain themselves, in order to put food on their family's table, uh, which is a, a incredibly unfair thing um, to do, especially in a pandemic. You, you shouldn't have to choose between feeding your family uh, and, and safety. That is uh, an unfair decision to make. So I do understand those things, and I am going to talk about, uh, about those things in, in a minute here. But... Um, Here's, here's part of the reason why it makes me nervous, more than anything. Uh, the reason why I disagree with doing live, in, especially indoor shows, I'll say specifically indoor shows, um, right now. Uh, I, we're about to hit wave two. I think that's going to happen, uh, inevitably. So I think this is perpetuating it. And we already have so many things perpetuating wave two. Um, you know, we've got these Trump rallies with no masks. We've got like Pennsylvania is going to 50% capacity. States like Florida have just been operating like we're not in a pandemic. Um, you know, and more of these restaurants and bars and things of that sort are opening up. And that plays into people's psychology because then they think like nothing's wrong. Right. So when we see the number of cases going down, that's a very good thing. It's a positive thing. 
uh, confirmed cases go down, more people start getting tested, the number of deaths start going down. That doesn't mean that we should, we should, you know, we should, uh, oh, uh, you know, just say, oh, well, uh, the cases are going down, the numbers are going down, let's just say fuck it all. And go back to the way things were. That just means that we need to stay the course so that the numbers continue to go down. You know, that's that's just the way things work. That's the logical way of doing this. And, yeah, we had, like, these car shows and all this crazy shit over the summer, and it just made the numbers go up. Not good, guys. That's not good. Um, it makes me nervous because of that. It makes me nervous that I don't want comedy and live entertainment and you know, these concerts and all this other stuff to be the cause of something like that. It just, it, 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 you know, I was talking to my friend about this, uh, uh, you know, because I had a birthday show planned at one of our, our venues here in Pittsburgh and it was still on their calendar because again, it's like everything is so uncertain. No one really has an answer for shit. And, uh, when they were starting to lift some of the restrictions in Pennsylvania, I said, well, you know, maybe we can try doing some live events with social distancing and masks and, um, you know, uh, XYZ safety protocols. And they were like, they were going to talk to me about it, but there was a, a bit of a tragedy. And, uh, you know, they was sort of a moot point. But I did think about that. I did think about, you know, well, would I do something like that? Would, would, would I be comfortable with doing a show at an indoor venue and really right now in the next few months especially it boils down to no I don't think I would be comfortable with it uh not just for this you know my safety or the safety of other performers and so on and so forth but you know if the if they come if somebody comes out to a show and they go well let's make a night of it and you know we'll go we'll go get a drink and we'll go get some appetizers and we'll go to this place or that place before we go to the show and then they come to the show and then somebody catches it it's just I don't I don't that's not something I can bear on my conscience I can't I can't have people getting sick on my watch I can't have people getting sick because they came out to see my show um it's part of the reason why I stick to the virtual ones right is is yes it's different yes it's it's it, it has a different vibe and all that but but we can make it work. You can make that sort of stuff work. I think clubs can also make that sort of stuff work. Uh, I've seen some venues do their do their regular events over over virtual, over either streaming on Facebook or doing it through Zoom or or, or something along those lines. And you know, the venues that are doing it, they're going so they have to go so above and beyond in terms of safety and stuff, you know, they have to have their uh, staff wear masks. They have to sometimes have the audience wearing masks. They're switching out mics per performer. They're sanitizing everything. They have to keep everything six feet apart. Um, you know, they're, they're set, uh, the logistics and um, selling tickets are, are a, can be a little bit more challenging and difficult. Um, if you're someone that comes alone to see concerts and stuff, it's going to be a little bit difficult, you know, because the priority is going to be for family groups and couples and stuff. Um, uh, rotating glassware, uh, they're doing hyper cleaning. So it becomes a lot and you're in 50% capacity. So then the question ends up becoming, um, do you charge more? Do you charge more? A lot of places I'm seeing are not because they're independent venues and they want people to come and afford a, a, a night out for uh, you know a, a good a good price. Um, so you look at uh, you look at something like a Teehees Comedy Club in Des Moines, Iowa, which is I know they've been running shows and they've been going above and beyond with the the way that they're they're handling all of the safety stuff by rotating the glassware and the social distancing and all that. They're doing between 10 to 30 bucks per uh, ticket. And, and the 30 bucks is like, that's like a package deal. You, you purchase a table. So if you know you're coming with a group of four, you purchase that table. 
And you have something like the uh, Comedy Attic in Bloomington, uh, and that's a comedy club. I don't perform particularly at comedy clubs, but, you know, for the sake of the argument, it is part of, <coughs> excuse me, my, part of the um, <coughs> world that, that I operate in, <coughs> you know, <coughs> comedy club, sorry. Um, Jack, it's got some cat hair on it. Uh, but uh, they're doing like a Zoom version of their show. They're having the traveling performer come in and they're doing like a Zoom version of their show as well as um, in person. But wait, if you're in person, you have to wear a mask. You're doing a temperature check. You know, they're very they're being very strict about like what uh, how, how people can get in. And then they'll stream it over Zoom and you get a purchase a ticket for that. But I don't know if they're how the comedian would hear if the people on Zoom are, are laughing or they're not laughing. And yeah, it, I think that it makes it a, it's a slight bit more complicated in that regard. But I mean, these are all additional costs that these comp- these uh, businesses now have to bear on themselves. To me, doing the touring thing is a little bit more socially irresponsible because of how the states are dealing with it. Like the states are dealing with it differently. Like each, like Iowa might have a different rule than Wisconsin, and uh, Maryland is going to be different than Pennsylvania. And so now it's like you're bringing those sort of, and you know, I don't know how much some of these comics are going to be social distancing, and neither does the club. And so it poses some additional risks. And on top of that, now, you know, some of these comedy clubs are going to be bringing in people from LA and New York and that means they're going to have to fly and that's a whole big thing and like flights right now super risky I would not want to do something like that it makes me nervous so that's part of the reason why I look at indoor events like that and I'm like "Eh, I think we can wait I think we can wait I was reading a paste article I you know and I wrote a big thing on my website about this a couple months ago about when I think we'll see live events and and touring performers across the country again um and i really thought it you know my 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 optimistic expectation is you know spring of next year maybe around maybe around february march um you know it, it, based on the way things things go but i'm i'm pr- it's probably going to be later it's probably going to be later if i'm being very honest about it and um look at that an electric car with a trump pen sign that's weird uh, sorry, that's just strange, but uh, you know, I I would not feel comfortable going state to state. I would not be comfortable, you know. And now the the venues might have to maybe cover the cost of the flight in the hotel, but I, I, most likely they're not. You know, like independent venues can't afford to put somebody up in a hotel or pay for their flight or anything like that. And airlines aren't partnering with fucking independent comedy clubs and independent rock clubs to to help out their artists like hell no they're trying to turn a buck they're trying to keep their whole thing going and and you know so it it poses some additional risks that i think uh right now not particularly worth it now again 100 percent understand it because if these venues don't open their doors and sell their tickets and sell their alcohol and sell their food and possibly merch if they have merch for sale um, and, and, and so on and so forth, there will no longer be independent venues. And I know that. I know that. Because I talked to somebody earlier this week, uh, or, or rather last week, uh, I released a podcast of a conversation I had last month with Jordan Grobe from the National Independent Venue Association, NEVA. Uh, and we talked about why it's important to save independent venues and why independent venues are actually so important. And uh, Congress right now is willfully killing independent venues by not putting um, measures out there to help independent venues, to help small businesses across the country. So they're willfully uh, killing small businesses, you know. They didn't come out with a new stimulus plan. They just went on vacation, and now they're back under the guise of, well, the post office and also stimulus. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about in this interview is, well, economics seem to be very important to these people. Art, art, not really. 
you know, I, I don't think people like Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi really give a shit about good art. Um, Ted Cruz, Klobuchar, they don't care about good art. Because good art, really good art, is interesting, it's weird, and it's subversive. And it challenges the status quo. It challenges the norms that we see in our society. That's good art. Uh, and they're not interested in that kind of shit. They're just not. They don't give a fuck. It challenges them. It challenges the way they, they operate in their world. But economics, they do care about. Economics is something that they can get behind because those are the values that they, t- you know, they're championing the capitalism. Capitalism is the best. We need the economics. Choose the economics over the safety. That's what we've seen all throughout this pandemic. So, you know, the, the way that Neva posed it was, look, for every $1 that is spent at a venue for a show, at an independent venue for any kind of show, um, about $12 is circulated throughout that community. And if you really think about it, somebody comes out to see a Chris Mohan show and they come to a, a kitschy, weird little venue and they spent $10 to come see that, they might go, well, you know what, let's go and make a night of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go and make a night of it. Um, let's, let's go get some dinner. We'll get some coffee. Uh, maybe a little dessert, and then we'll go to the venue. We'll get, we'll have a drink or two there, and then we'll if if it's a really good show, then we'll go and uh, go to that bar down the street from the venue, and and buy some alcohol there. And you know, if they're making a night of it, they might end up spending an additional hundred to hundred and fifty dollars, all in that all in that one area, and that's a that's that's a twelve to one ratio. That's per person. So independent venues in that regard really bring millions and billions of dollars into into communities. And really what this shows, what this argument shows, is who runs the economy. It's not Wall Street or the stock exchange. It's not rich people. It's not billionaires. It's us. We run it. Independent venues aren't, uh, you know sponsored by Apple or Amazon or what have you they're they are independent venues yeah they're standalones so Congress was supposed to pass this bill but I mean even the economic argument really shows you like how independent the people really are and how the people are creating a sense of community and how we are keeping the communities alive um you know, so and, and and again, that's part of the reason why there's no there's no stimulus, there's no uh, grant or anything for small businesses. It's a, it's a, it's a complete crapshoot for them. So I do get why some of these places are running indoor shows with all of the safety measures, and sometimes they're not running it with safety measures. But the ones even that are running with, I get it, I get it, I understand it. I just don't feel comfortable with it. Um, I, I think it's, it's again, it's that Sophie's choice of safety over economy, safety over financial stability. And right now, Congress can pass the bills that Neva has put out there, the, Staver, sa- the Save Our Stages bill um, and the Restart bill. Uh, these bills will help independent venues and small businesses stay afloat. Maybe they can run their resources in a different direction, right? Purchase some streaming equipment. Figure out how to do that Zoom show on their stage. <coughs> sorry, excuse, I'm sorry I'm coughing. This is the last bit of phlegmy phlegm that's in my system with all of the weather changes. Um, but, you know, that that is... I get it. And Congress can pass this. If they can give $5 trillion to the banks with no questions asked, why can't they do that for the small business communities? They're willfully choosing not to. Now, I did get an email a um, couple months, a couple a couple days ago, a couple months ago, what the fuck? A couple days ago uh, from Neva talking about the HEROES Act that's been uh, reproposed. 
um, and the stimulus plan, and a lot of it is the same, right? They're $1,200. It's not. It's a stopgap measure. $1,200 to the American people. They're going to do 600 bucks a week in unemployment insurance. Uh, again, those two, unless you're going to fix the loopholes, which left uh, hundreds and thousands of Americans um, that were ineligible to get the uh, stimulus bill or stimulus uh, money or the unemployment money, then, um, <clears throat> you know, this is still nothing to drop in the bucket. To drop in the bucket, it's a stopgap measure for um, two or three weeks at best. It's really it. Uh, you know, but they want to spend four hundred and thirty-six billion in uh, in in the states. They want to allocate that money to the states. Uh, Twenty-eight billion in contact tracing and and uh, testing. Great, awesome. Uh, and the big one is bigger support for small businesses by expanding the Paycheck Protection Program, which was something that Neva wanted to do. And again, I don't know if the Paycheck Protection Program is really all that great. It seems like another stopgap measure. You know, you're giving them the money to pay their employees rather than just giving the money directly to the employees. Then, then the business has to make a, a decision of like, well, we got this PPE and it's enough to either keep our staff paid for three weeks or keep the lights on and pay the rent for another month and a half. <coughs> so it really makes things, again, it's, it's just putting a Sophie's Choice out there. And what this is going to do if these venues shut down, and we've already seen a bunch of venues shut down. Great Scott in Boston is one of them. Rex Theater in Pittsburgh is another one. We might, we're might we going to see a ton of, ton more. Um, and those aren't the only two. There's a bunch of all across the country. Um, people are going to be out of work. People are going to lose their homes because they've lost their only means of income. <clears throat> The community is going to lose a large amount of revenue. So it's important. It's important to keep these venues alive. uh, For the sake of safety and for the sake of community and for the sake of economics. Now Germany is is doing something where they're they're pumping about a billion euros into their arts communities. Right? So America, questionable on whether they want to help art. Germany, let's do this. Let's help art. And uh, they're spending a bunch of money, like they're spending about fifty-six million dollars in in the in uh, grassroots venues, like the independent venues that we're talking about here. Uh, about one hundred and thirty-five million dollars into the film industry. Um, a l- little bit more than one one sixty-nine about the theater and dance community. Um, they're going to spend about twenty billion in, or twenty, uh, sorry, twenty million in radio broadcasting, and then <clears throat> another thirty-two million in galleries and, and sociocultural events. Because they realize that art is important. They realize that the, 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 there is value in art and music and comedy. It gets you to think. It's critical thinking. It improves those skills to understand humor to understand music, to connect with emotionality, to look at a painting and and feel something and talk about those feelings. Those are all good things. Here in America, they're like, no, let's shut all that shit down. How do we create more compliant citizenship? That's what they want. And art teaches you how to subvert that because it challenges the status quo. And these Congress members are pro-status quo. <clears throat> So, you know, I, I would say if you have a local venue around, look, and outdoor events are completely different. They're very dependent on the weather. With things kind of cooling down, at, you know, I'm up north, so you know, things are starting to kind of cool down. The weather is very finicky, and so you, you have that to deal with. And if it's over the summertime, well, then you have the heat to deal with, and hopefully you can provide people with waters and there, there's a lot of challenges to doing an outdoor show, though it is better. Um, there, there is, there are venues that I've seen doing outdoor shows, 
being socially responsible with it, spreading people out. Um, but it's but there are there are some challenges to it uh, all around music, comedy, poetry, whatever your whatever your um, your art is. But we should be saving these venues. Is my point. If Congress would have done something about it immediately, we would have seen less venues that needed to be opened up um, to pay their bills, to do stand up, to call. You know, I mean, I see these venues. They're they're calling people from other states. You know, like they're doing more regional showcases. For, you know, and I'm speaking specifically in terms of comedy now. Um, and they're, but even then, it's like regional. If you're in Milwaukee, to Chicago is like two hours away, and uh, you know the rules for Illinois are different than the rules for Wisconsin. Like, are you gonna suggest that these people fucking quarantine themselves for two weeks once they get back to Chicago? I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to me. It doesn't feel right. But if Congress would have done something and bailed them out, they wouldn't have the need to do something like that. They could f- focus their energy on different means. They could innovate. They could invest in some technology. It's changing. The landscape is changing. When we come out of this COVID world, the entertainment landscape is going to be very different. There's going to be a lot of different options. And it's going to be, uh, and for time being, I think it's going to be very difficult to get people out of the house. Um, to come see a thing, to know that there's worth and value in coming to see a live event. So uh, I hope it doesn't come. I, I hope that venues do get saved. I, 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 you know, and I hope that the venues that have been lost get some kind of uh, uh, compensation for it. That's my hope. Okay, on to topic number two: uh, the shit show that was the debates. Um, so up top, I'll be very honest. I did not watch the whole thing. I watched about an hour and that's all I could handle. I'm sorry. I watched a few, uh, additional clips here and there and, um, sorry I couldn't watch the whole thing. It was a fucking nightmare. Uh, from the get go, it was a fucking nightmare. Like Chris Wallace just, I mean, he had no control over anything, over fucking anything. No control. No fucking control. It was just, it was just a fucking Wild West for an, like, holy shit. Holy shit. Let's go over some of the highlights, right? They start with the Supreme Court, because why not? And, and Biden makes this fucking statement where he goes, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, the, the people are voting for the Supreme Court. It's on the ballot, because... Uh, the way you the way the people choose the Supreme Court is by picking their president, and vice president, ca- presidential candidate, and congressional candidates, so that <clears throat> you know they they can make a choice about who gets to be on the Supreme Court. And it's just like that's not no. How about you, we vote them in? That's going to make people more involved in politics. Oh shit, a real democracy where people's voice actually matters. And it's not just corporate control all the time. Look, if you think Biden's fucking Supreme Court pick would have been different or better than Trump's, you might have gotten some Roe v. Wade leniency, maybe. But, you know, overall, when it comes to making big decisions, they just don't. I just did a whole show about the Supreme Court. Uh, The video will be released in a few weeks, but they don't. They have way too much power. They need to be. They need to be reined in. And the, one of the biggest ways they can be reined in is by fucking having us vote for them. So this spirals out. Things get fucking nuts. And Trump starts talking about how the Democratic Party uh, wants to get socialist with health care. They they want to do the socialist health care plan, and Trump. <laughs> starts talking about, you know, oh, but that's what the, the party's leaning towards socialism. They're leaning towards socialism. First of all, this is false. They're not, the Democratic Party is not leaning towards socialism. Uh, as a socialist, I can tell you that they're fucking not. And they 
straight up came out and said that they will never support Medicare for all. And Biden himself has come out and said that he will veto Medicare for all because he wants the ACA and the ACA is hooked into fucking private insurance companies and, and uh, big pharma. So why would he lose that? They, they endorse him. They fucking put money into, into his coffers. They fucking bailed him out. Why would he? Why would he put take away the ACA? Like, there's so much pride. He's like Obama, ACA. Haha, <laughs> that's me. Remember Obama? You can go back to sleep if you got old Sleepy Joe. So that's a straight up lie from Trump. And then you get the great fucking Biden. I mean, this is like first five minutes, right? Where Biden just goes, "I am the Democratic Party." Oh, jeez. The fucking ego on this guy. He is the Democratic Party. Oh, boy. You're not the Democratic Party. You you are a mascot at best. Not a good mascot either because your cognitive uh, functions are, are failing. Within 10 minutes, Chris Wallace has lost control and now... It's Chris Wallace debating Trump. And then Trump calls it out, too. Like, he straight up fucking calls it out. The sheer insanity of it all. Within, I mean, within 10 minutes, I was just like, what is what's, what the fuck is happening? This is devolving so fucking quickly. And then they start insulting Bernie. Start insulting Bernie Sanders, who's not even there. He's probably at home fucking watching this on his TV. He drops Pocahontas. Trump drops the Pocahontas reference. Talking about Elizabeth Warren. And it's just like, what the fuck are we doing? These people aren't even... Like, they're not even here. Oh, my God. What a night... It was such a living nightmare. Then they start taking low blows at each other. You know, Trump keeps talking about 47 years in office. You've done anything significant. Uh, Biden goes over and he's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, You're a buffoon. You're a clown. And the thing with Trump is, look, in reality, he had no answers for a lot of the questions. So he went to bait Biden, and Biden took the fucking bait. And I saw earlier today that PolitiFact confirmed that he wasn't, you know, wearing a thing in his ear to to tell him in what direction to go. And I read that, and I was like, well, maybe he fucking should have. Maybe he should have had a little guy in his ear to be like, hey, he's baiting you. He's baiting you. You should not take the bait. You should not take the fucking bait. You should chill out. Hey, man, he seems to be baiting you. You should fucking chill out. He didn't, so. Uh, then that, the, well, yeah, the, the one interaction that it ended with is, uh, you don't know what you're talking about, and uh, folks, do you guys even know what this clown is doing? That's a Biden quote. I mean, he goaded him right into the, into the thing, and he knew that he was going to. Look at the way that Biden has talked about Trump in the past, right? Like, Biden wants to fight Trump. He said that if he was in high school, he would beat the shit out of him. So they took that. They, and then they took his, his, his failing uh, cognitive abilities. They took the fact that he's going to get flustered very quickly. And, I mean, they ran with it. Not one policy question was legitimately answered. And then eventually we got to uh, the Supreme Court packing, right? Like uh, Biden was asked whether he was going to pack the courts. And then he does this political. I'm the politician, so I will uh, look. Come on, man. Look, here's the thing. Look, here's what we're going to do. And he never answers the question whether he's going to pack the courts or not. 
And and so Trump just kept asking, are you going to pack the courts? Are you going to pack the courts? Are you going to pack the courts? And so that's when Biden goes, hey, will you shut up? And fair, but it's also, that's the moderator's job to do. Chris Wallace needs to fucking do that. But they don't. And they did that with the Democratic debates, too. Where they would let the fucking candidates bicker amongst each other. And fight amongst each other. But that's good. That sells soap. That's good for the network. That's good for the ratings. So fuck all. Who gives a shit? I mean, it was just obnoxious. They both interrupted each other throughout every step, every turn. Trump would say something and Biden would interrupt and Biden would say something and Trump would interrupt. And Chris Wallace at one point was just like, guys, you got to, can we just please, I got, no, I'm just, please, I just, please, somebody listen to me. I am an important person. I am on the television. Yeah, uh, and then Trump points out 47 years in office and you've accomplished nothing. And and then there's all this hypocrisy in the way that Biden wants to handle the pandemic, right? Early responses, we got to put, um, you know, uh, the economy has to come second and this, that and all that. And it's just like, yeah, if the economy comes second, then approve Medicare for all. We're in a global pandemic, then say that you'll approve Medicare for all. And he's like, oh, that's going to put $10 million, put us $10 million in the hole. Yeah, because you don't understand how math works. It's going to save us money. We're spending 50, uh, I think it's 50 billion or something like that. And then you're like, well, the insurance companies, if we're spending that much, and then we add Medicare for all on top. No, it's, no, 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 we're not adding Medicare for all on top of it. We're switching to Medicare for all because it would save us like $20 billion. He wants to handle this fucking pandemic properly, yet he doesn't want to do what it's going to take to handle this pandemic properly is really what it boils down to. That's really what it all comes down to. So you have this big, you know, his hypocrisies are being shown in the way he says he wants to handle the pandemic and then uh, all the things that would help him handle the pandemic the way that he wants to handle it, he won't do it because, well, he beat the socialists and the ideas are all socialist. But we need, we're a capitalist country and we need to think about the economy, but we also have to think about the safety of people. Well, those things don't go hand in hand. Either you're going to fucking think about the economy or you're going to think about people's safety. Pick one. That's, you, you know, that's... Oh, yeah, and Trump, don't say smart around me, you're dumb. What the fuck? What kind of playground bullshit is this? He turned into a fucking playground bully. You can't say smart. And then Trump has the fucking gall to bring up how opening the states is necessary because it's going to affect the mental health of people. No, watching this debate is affecting the mental health of people. That's wrecking the mental health of, of, of Americans all across this country. So watch this fucking sham happen in front of us. It says it's not fair. It's like being in prison. It's like, I don't know. Have you seen prisons? Do you Are you aware of what prisons actually are and what they look like? Because this ain't it, friend. Then Trump calls out Biden, uh, you know, because they start going after Trump's taxes and he calls out Biden about how he's the one that wrote the tax codes and, uh, you know, that helped all these rich people get uh, loopholed out and get all of these, you know, benefits because that's what he did with the tax code. And that was an Obama Obama law. And Obama helped him get rich. 
and not pay taxes. And, you know, Biden stumbled and struggled because he can't answer that question without lying, essentially, and getting caught lying. And and look, that's what they're going to do with, with the... Um, with the issue of Trump's taxes, right, is what they'll do is they will make it a issue about Trump and not an issue about how the rich are st- are controlling legislation. They, they bought out our politicians. Citizens United has allowed corporations to be people. And... So then Biden just goes, you're the worst president this country's ever had. I don't like you. It's like, maybe, I don't know. Andrew Jackson was pretty fucking terrible. It's my turn for the presidency, Trump. I want it. It's my turn. Ew. All right, man. Fuck. You're the worst president we've ever had. It's like, fuck, that's your argument. You're in a debate. Hit him with some policies. Hit him with your ideas. But they don't have anything good. So they have to make a good show out of it. And it's which, which you know, fucking yelly old man did you like less? That's who you're not going to vote for. That's not how an election's supposed to work. Biden was struggling to keep up. Trump keeps baiting him and he keeps taking the bait. And he gets all, and he starts stumbling around, right? And... I look, and then Chris Wallace can't fucking control either of them, and I feel like that's sort of the way. Like it's a it's a perfect al- uh, metaphor for American politics because you know you you have the private businessman, and he's basically running the show because he's got the politician on the ropes, and he's calling out the politician about his corruption and shit. And the politician can't do anything about it. And the media is just like, we'd like a little bit of uh, some kind of niceness happening here. I'm, I'm in charge. I'm somebody very in charge. And both the politician and the private business owner are like, shut the fuck up and keep the cameras pointed on us and make us look pretty, you puppet. Fucking dance. Dance, puppet. And, that, and it's like, that's exactly how this system is run. You have the media that just kind of lets the show go on. The private business is kind of dragging along the politicians and the politicians are complaining, but they'll just kind of cave in and give in to private business interest anyway. They'll bend the knee for the private interest industries. That's what they do. That's what they've always done. That's what they'll continue doing. Ugh. This was a gem. Then Biden comes out and says uh, that he is the the only president that might have done more for the black community than Joe Biden was Abraham Lincoln. Which is a lie. And also very Republican of him to compare... It's like I'm the I I am the party of Lincoln. I'm the entire entire party of Lincoln. I am Abraham Lincoln. Just like, ooh, Joe, I think your dementia is totally set in. Also your delusions of grandeur too. I have a stove top pipe hat. Very tall, very tall hat. Joe Biden wrote one of the worst fucking crime bills of all time. He advocated for the three strike rule, uh, implemented a a, a war on drugs and has put more black people in prison. Uh, Also, he said, if you don't vote for him, you're not black. And then he dismissed it by saying locker room talk. And 
and we're and we're all supposed to just be like, oh, okay. Well, he's a Democrat, so I guess they're allowed to say that. I have a black friend, Barack Obama, so I'm allowed to say who who is and isn't black. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can say you've done more for the black community. Uh, that's a sociopathic thing to say. Oh, here's another gem dealing with race in the debates where Trump basically said that uh, racial sensitivity is bad for America. It's un-American to be racist. And, and you know what? T- t- technically speaking, he's right because this country was still founded on slavery. It was still founded on racial tensions. It took a really long time for black people to be counted as people. Racism is part of America's history, and this guy is just like, it's it's kind of not. It's because white people are pretty cool. And then I saw the fucking Proud Boys segment where, I mean, at, at this point, it's like Trump was getting flustered, and instead of saying stand down, he just told him to stand by. And it totally seemed like an old man move, but fucking holy shitballs. What a terrible gaffe that was telling domestic terrorists to stand by. This is what happens when you you have a capitalist system that values entertainment more than discourse. And that's exactly what this is. This is all entertainment. None of this was real. There's no policy discussed. There were no ideas put on the table. Some people uh, I've seen on social media telling me that, oh, well, this is... Well, now they're going to vote for Biden. And it's like, really? After all of that? Because that was a sham. This is not what the American people deserve. This is not what the voting system deserves. It was a fucking shit show. It's a clown car with two people. It's not even it's not even that funny when you think about it. They're like, oh, my God, a clown car. It'll be this will be exciting. And then two very small people come out of the car and they're like, ah, pretty funny. Two small people in a small car. And they're like, I don't think you get it. I don't think you get how jokes work. I don't think you get how any of this works. Please go away. And they're like, no, we're going to be here. and We're going to stay louder. This is what happens when you value entertainment over discourse and, and critical thinking. But that's what it is. It's entertainment. People aren't looking for ideas anymore. They're not looking for 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 candidates with uh, with thought, with 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 heart or empathy. They're just looking for who's the who's the most entertaining person, who's got the who's got the entertainment values that I have. You know, who shares the same entertainment values that I do? I'll vote for that person. Not who's got the same ideals that I do in general. And, and, and you know, if, if I don't believe that they have the same ideals, can I talk to them? Will they listen to me? Will they understand where they're I'm coming? Can, can they move in the direction of progress? And neither of these candidates are going to move in the direction of progress. Uh, they are going to move in the direction of good ratings. Because the reality is we all fucking watched it. And they're going to do it again twice. And you know what they're going to do? The same fucking shit. This might be the last fucking debates I watch. I don't think I'm going to watch the other two. Very good chance I won't watch the other two. I will be very surprised if I get baited into watching the other two. Uh, And I don't think you guys should either. I don't think anybody should watch the debates because this is what they're going to be. They're shams. They are pieces of entertainment. They are not about policy. They're not about politics. They're not about the people. They're about ratings for MSNBC and CNN and whoever else decides to replay them. This entire election is a reality television show. And that is the epitome of what capitalism is. When you run a government on capitalism, or rather when capitalism runs a government, this is kind of what happens. Entertainment takes over real discourse. Politics becomes entertainment. I'm not saying it can't be entertaining, but it's not entertainment. 
A political comedian can be part of entertainment and still be informative and engaging and fun. Education can be all of those things. But this is not. This is just... It's reality TV. I don't know if I want to keep participating in it anymore. Uh, I think that's it. That's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, like I said at the top of the show, look out for the, some of those live streams. Look out for um, my my albums uh, on Bandcamp that they'll be doing a revenue share. Uh, look out for updates on my website, Um If you like this video, share it out. If you uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, make sure you're subscribed. Um, however you are listening to it, YouTube, Facebook, Rockfin, uh, audio podcasts, all, all that stuff. Um, but uh, till the next time, thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. You guys are delightful, wonderful people. And uh, like I, and again, if you can donate, if you can become sustaining members, please do. That helps um, all of my endeavors grow, um, reach newer spots. I'm, I'll be able to do more things. Um, so, yeah. But uh, till the next time, uh, thank you for getting into it. We'll see you on the road.